Hi everyone, welcome back to the last episode of Saku's Art Classroom. Before I begin, I'd just like to say thank you all so much for all the support, all the homework submissions, and seeing all your enthusiasm. Everyone being so excited to improve their art really makes me happy. And if you haven't already, check out my whole series. There is three more episodes before this where I talk about anatomy, hands, perspective, and color. So without further ado, let's move on to today's class. I can totally speak today, which is shading. Woo! So this one was also really highly requested. So I thought it was kind of like following a process because when you do a drawing, you start with like sketching and you're drawing humans. You need to know anatomy and hands and then perspective, which is kind of in sketching as well. And then you move on to coloring and then you move on to shading. So yeah um before we start i just like to do a quick exercise which is do you know where the light source is exercise so i'll give you guys maybe like five seconds to think okay cool you probably have your answer because this is quite straightforward so the light source on these pictures on the left here this picture um the light source is from here going down from here so the it's more like here going down to here you're going to here it's through like this window thingy of the bridge hitting my face um the sunlight so that's why the sun hits there while this side is full of shadows and because this is done during like i think a golden hour so uh the sunlight will be more harsh so you can see there's kind of some cell shading action going on where it's not blended where you can really see the shadows and yeah for the second one here it's a bit trickier but if you answered that it came from behind then you are correct so the lighting hits from behind which is why the face is kind of dark especially compared to this photo and yeah so the reason i want to say this is that every drawing that you create you need to know where you're going to put the light source by the way, if you did not know, these are photos from my Saku art shop and I actually just have a shop update. You see this cool notebook, it's actually blank and a sketchbook kind of, even though it's more like a notebook but blank, but you can buy it and draw in it and like take notes in it. It'd be really cool if you can come support and buy some of my stuff and you see this really cool bucket hat, well it's back in stock so maybe you should check it out. I just needed to plug because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just very <laughs> excited and proud of my merchandise. So if you want, you can go, <laughs> go check it out. So yeah, the link will be in the description. It's sakuartshop.bigcartel.com. Okay. Anyways, enough with the self promo. Uh, let's move on. So. Here is a cheat sheet I just found by googling. So you can see how the lighting, the light sources and different angles will really change how the shading of that person or subject will be. So let's start here, for example. So basically, this one, it says flash 45 degrees down. So imagine the camera is above you. So, okay, this is the person, let's do a side of you. Here is the light source. It's kind of shining down like this. So that's why there's a stronger cast on here. It's kind of like knowing your directions. Um, and then as for this one, because this is facing zero degrees, so it's straightforward here. This one's 45 degrees, so it'll be like here to here, So which is why it's brighter on this side and like darker on this side. The main concept you need to get with shading, oh, the shading is that um, there's always going to be a start i really cannot speak today there's always going to be a side that's lighter and always a side that is darker so the where the flash hits of course that will be the lighter side and that will create a large shadow and the harsher the light is the stronger the shadow is as well harsher like means like bright but also like very like focused like sometimes when you're in sunlight the shadow is not that noticeable because it's like like not like very direct it's like everywhere is kind of like 
shining on you so it's less direct so therefore you have less shadow i don't know if that makes sense so you also have to keep that in mind is how harsh the lighting is so following that logic um that's just the camera rotating upwards and then for this one the, the camera the flash is just directly above so not above here but like here and going straight here and then it's the same thing you rotate it and you see how it, the light different rotations can affect the shadow Dude, I don't know why my brain's like fried today, <laughs> so um, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. And same for here, but this one is just the light is on the bottom and it's shining up. Cool! So um, if you want, you can take a picture. This photo is not by me, it's by DIYphotography.net if you're interested. Uh, yeah, it's photography and drawing do have a lot of common. Okay, so let's do some exercises. I drew this just now. It's just a face. So it says 45 degrees at 45 degrees flash down. So the camera will be like here, facing down like here. It's more like here facing that way. So that's something really important to keep in mind is when you're trying to shade, really know where the lighting is. So imagine the light source is here. Let's write LS. Okay, and then let's use a different color. I like using multiply. 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 Okay, here. So if the lighting is here, then probably hit like here. And then, especially this side of the face will be darker. And since it's facing up, the, this part of the neck will also be darker. And the bottom of the nose will be quite dark as well. Yeah, so that was pretty straightforward, pretty spot on compared to this one. And hey, next one 180 and 0 degrees flash. So it's facing straight forward. 180 means it's right directly behind. So this one's pretty simple, I think. So it's just da, 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 da. <laughs> Is it just like this? 180. Oh, it is. So <laughs> you just cover it in the face. You can see how the light is shifting too. So that's pretty cool. Okay, last one. 0 45 flash up so it's down to up so the camera will be like here and it's going up so if you think about that there should be like a little shadow like on the neck and then maybe like more here because there's less light and then let me I'm not really sure, actually. Uh, not kind of close. Kind, kind of close. Maybe just more shadow here and like that. Yeah, and this is how you would do if it's bottom to up. So you can see how the lighting, even if it's the same subject, will be affected where the angle and where the light source is. Cool. Okay, next topic I wanted to briefly talk about is called chiaroscuro hope i'm pronouncing that correct but basically it is a technique used in fine art and i really like this technique so i thought i'd just share it with you guys if you were interested okay let me change back to this color 
So chiaroscuro, chiaroscuro in art is the use of strong contrast between light and dark, usually bold contrast affecting a whole composition. It is also a technical term used by artists and art historians for the use of a con con contrast of light to achieve a sense of volume in modeling three-dimensional objects and figures. So that's what it means. Um, this is important is I wanted to tell you guys is that how you use light and shading in your drawing or painting can really affect the overall mood. So Kiaskuro, to my knowledge, if I remember correctly, was really popular around the Baroque period and the Dutch Golden Age period. If you recognize this painting, which is really, really famous, so you've probably at least seen it somewhere. It's called Girl with the Pearl Earring. And this one is just another example. And in these paintings, you can see how dramatic the lighting is and how it's really shining on the subject only to really emphasize them for you to be the focal point. Anyways, so you can see how the lighting really stands out this figure while the other ones are like shaded so you can't see them that well so it puts more focus and emphasis on her. Same for this character, well, girl right here. So yeah, that is really important to do as well if you're interested. So yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting not using the techniques but just understanding them too kind of helps put your art on another level and like makes you think more about like different art techniques which is thought it was pretty cool okay next thing is using lighting to set the mood so that was what i was talking about briefly earlier so kind of to touch up on that i just showed like how i personally use even though i don't have as dramatic lightings as kiosk <laughs> kiosk girl um, but um, you can still know that different lightings and moods can help change the overall mood you wanted, the vibes of the drawing you were going for. Okay, so this drawing I've done earlier, it's basically kind of just a visual d development kind of, <laughs> I don't even know. So this drawing I posted on Instagram. Uh, it's kind of like a visual development and just for me for myself it's kind of about my culture from hong kong but also just like i don't know as going for developing kind of like different visuals if i have to create a story and i thought this one really stuck out um see you can see i use really warm lights to go for a really warm and welcoming tone and the sunlight shining makes you feel really like fuzzy and like comfort comfort <laughs> is that even a what am i okay today <laughs> but really comfortable and just going for that really nice summer vibes i do stop seeing vibes vibes sounds so cringe but i hope you guys understand so that was the mood i was going for similar here i used another warm colors but this one is more for juxtaposition so this one i did for my ib art so <laughs> IB, uh, i'm so glad i'm done with that now so um so as you can see here the lining of the market which is really warm and bright colors juxtaposes which contrasts with the darker grays and blacks here which kind of puts more focus and emphasis on the market which is what i was going for and also like gives like a tone and like makes you like wonder like oh it's kind of talking about like my culture heritage in like hong kong as well um very cool um by the way uh if you don't know i'm selling this as a print and i'm, I'm praising them like relatively cheap because um, i'm gonna still like it's my first batch and I don't know it's, it's my first batch so you know like I like I can know and improve in the future so you can buy it for like a cheaper price right now I'm just saying sakuarshop.bigcartel.com I am I'm like losing it um cool so it's just because my room has a lot of prints and a lot of merch and my mom's like you gotta sell them before you leave because uh, this takes up a lot of space and I'm scared that I won't sell all of it and my room's looking like a garage and storage room right now so please help me out okay anyways <clears throat> you can also buy this as a folder so very cool um 
yeah i kind of just wanted to like tell you guys and show some examples of my artwork just to tell you guys like even though i show you guys a lot of fine art techniques like paintings more like realism baroque impressionism you know like a lot of different <laughs> types of art but they can whatever the period movement and style is you can still apply all this knowledge to your own artwork as well which i think is really important so even though you see here i used a very like anime-esque style but you can see lighting is still really prevalent just like how lighting is prevalent in these baroque slash dutch golden age artworks as well which is like a really like a few hundred years ago so yeah that is kind of it for this video it's kind of short but i think it's short and sweet and covers everything i wanted to talk about for shading um again i don't want to just like draw and then you guys just copy what i'm drawing because i think in that way you won't really develop as your own artist because in that way you won't really think for yourself and just blindly following someone else which i don't think is the best way to learn for just anything in general um you know like the saying it's like teach a man how to like fish no buy a man a fish he'll eat the fish once and then if you teach him how to fish though they get infinite fish you know like, like i don't know i forgot how the quote goes but you know what i'm saying like let's just um forget because that's probably like not the actual saying let's just change it to buy someone lettuce they only eat lettuce once but if you teach them how to grow lettuce they can eat lettuce forever so you know what i'm saying everyone loves lettuce if you don't like lettuce please get out please get out of this channel right now you're not okay just kidding but like how can you not like lettuce that was a joke but but but, but like I'm, I'm like half joking because everyone should like lettuce and okay as you can see i am losing it for the last sakura's arts classroom i've been crazily working on my own projects um most notably um, my convention booth coming up. So, um, we go to Hong Kong. And if not, you can uh, buy my stuff online too to support. I've been working on that like crazy while trying to film and edit all my videos, which is making me insane. But, you know, okay, anyways, that was a nice chatting moment. <laughs> uh, okay, anyways, key takeaways know where the light source is and then second is use lighting with the mood to bring out certain aspects of your art i.e. focal point mood Don't forget that you can use colors to help you with shading as well, which I talked about in my colors video, which you can go check out. The link is in the description, or you can just finish watching this video because that will be the end card too. So yeah, I know my handwriting is really messy, but you know, just, just neuron activation, understand what I'm saying. I hope, um, like, digest digest that's the word yes okay cool that is it for this video as for homework and it's our final homework time like of course you can always go back and watch all the videos and do the homework if you're interested but for the last like critique video here are the two tasks i'm gonna give you guys so the first task is to do two or how many you want i just said two a minimum portrait slash shadow studies so that's the exercise i did in the beginning where i figured out where the angle and light sources and then make this draw the shadows based off where the light source is and in the drawing specify which angle that you choose so i know that you didn't like accidentally do the correct thing you know and the second task is submit any illustration with notable lighting or notable light source and then i will critique it and just tell you guys what you guys can do to improve kind of like the coloring task from last week so yes that is it for this and saku's art classroom um 
final thoughts is that I'm really happy to be able to help you guys on your art journey and I am really happy for all the support and love you guys have given me for it so yeah um this is like not the end of course i'm still uploading a lot of different content most notably if you've been seeing around i'll be doing more sketch hong kongs where i just go around different parts of my city and just drawing urban sketching and vlogging and also um dance covers probably i don't know you should subscribe to find out and maybe your occasional like art tips yeah because i kind of want my channel to inspire people but i don't want to be solely just art help related if that makes sense i just want to be a channel about me and a channel about helping others so yeah uh cool that's the end of this video and see you in my next video and i'm looking forward to critiquing you all for the last time well not last time but for now the last time so bye